Well, I've had a bit of a win. I went into town, into a toy store called Hobby Co, and we found some new take and play toys. Remembering where we live, we find it very difficult to find these toys. I paid a pretty high price for these, but my son was very excited to see these. And I think these engines come from the earlier part of the Thomas and Friends series franchise. <laughs> It is interesting seeing these two characters come back to life in a sense. It flies in the face of my argument about green characters. These guys are both green and there's the old saying, it's not easy in being green. I sort of made note that there was a ton of green characters that basically vanished from the Thomas and Friends Empire. You're looking forward to opening these, aren't you? I know Cranky's fun to play with. He's in the background there looking at you. Let's have a look on the back of this, see what we've got. What are the other ones in this series here? I had got that one. Yeah. And this one and this one. Yes. And that one. Murdoch, yes. And I haven't got that one long time ago. Yeah. We've got these up here now, yeah. but we've got all the, these other engines. And um it is a fight for me to get some of this stuff. Just believe me, I just wish Mattel uh, maybe would slip me some engines. I don't know if they watch my stuff. Probably don't they're probably too busy um banking the cash. Before I open the engines, we'll be doing that very soon. I'll just explain what I've been doing up here. I've uh, collected all the take and play sets that my boys got. I'm not sure if I presented all of these on the YouTube. This is one that I'm actually making an intro video video for. That's why it's out. This is a great set, the Soda Ironworks. Uh, and there's some other sets up here. Some of these you haven't seen. I never did videos for. Uh, but it's quite interesting when you see them all up on the table. It takes up actually a fair bit of real estate I was quite surprised how much space these take up once you put them all out on the table okay we're gonna open up the big city engine first I think it was called the foreign engine originally I hope I'm right there now you guys are gonna correct me if I'm wrong but it's actually really nice to see things from the earlier era um, come out and be toys again well, someone was very very happy to see these in the source thank you we've got the box here and the engine is going to come out any moment now. It's exciting. Oh, love that. That plastic sound. Oh, it's a fantastic looking engine, this one, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's interesting. It's solid at the back there. Here comes the tender. It's a tender engine, that one. What do you think of that one? It looks pretty snazzy, doesn't it? Yeah. Let's give it a run somewhere. Oh, yeah. First run in the ironworks there. Got an interesting sort of grumpy face that one. I think it had a bit of attitude uh, when it was a character. What? He's so angry like Diesel 10. Oh, my boy. Diesel 10's happy these days. You've got the older uh, Diesel 10 there who's the old cranky grump. But we can't have cranky grumps anymore. Mind you, it looks like uh, this big city engine has got a fair bit of attitude looking at that face. And it might have a crash in a second. Right on cue. Well, for some reason, Diesel 10 has stolen the tender there, but let's take a look at the face of this character. There it is there. Fairly grumpy, fair bit of attitude going on there, which is, I think that's fairly interesting to see. I like it. I like it a lot. Dad? Yes? It looks like Hero. It does actually look like Hero. I think it's because, well, it's a large tender engine and I think it's because it's got these flanks or whatever they are on the side here I know the train fans will tell me what they are those um, I think it's for wind yeah I think it's to, to make channel the wind up to the choo-choo oh. I'm making that up actually yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know what they're for right. yeah. well let's just do a hard up comparison here I'll land a hero in there do you think there's any sort of similarity going on there let me lift that one up so we can see both of them am I going totally mad you're probably thinking, oh, Leo, Leo, leave it. You're going totally mad. No, there's a lot of difference, actually. Look at the boiler shape. The wheel configuration is different. It was those flukes, whatever they are. They just rolled off. It was that thing on the side that was making me think a hero. Jeez, I love that face. It keeps saying to me, ah. And there's one other observation I'll make. This is actually a very light take and play. Um, they've really refined the art of making these very light. Obviously, they're plastic underneath. They've still got that metal top, but they must really do a thin uh, splash of die-cast metal these days. And that's, in a sense, that's sort of nice because it saves 
Mummy and Daddy's expensive TV when these things get hurled across the lounge room. Dad? Yes? You don't have the cab details. Oh, that's actually quite interesting. Look at that. There's a hero there. It's got the cab details. I think Gordon's got cab details on the tank and play. This one's just a blank end. That's a bit weird, isn't it? And there's Spencer, who's got cab details as well. Is this the way these little toys are becoming a little bit cheaper to make? Mmm. That has me curious. I wonder if I've got one of the new Gordons here. I wonder if it's got a blanked off end. Molly, I think from the picture here, looks like it's got cab details. I don't know if I've got a Catlin or not. I don't know, I'm a bit curious about this now. Well, we know this has got a blanked off end and no cab details. Well, we've actually solved part of the mystery here. My boy has one of the newer type Gordons. You can tell the newer ones um, because they've got a different axle style. They've got like the Hot Wheels, I call it the Hot Wheels axle style. Or someone will correct me and say, oh, it's called this or that or the other. Um, that's the newer one and so you can see the cabin details in here. So that's sort of nice to see. Would like to send a bit of cabin details on this one. And I've actually got one of them in box here, and it's the different packaging as well. This style of packaging is when the um, the axles changed for better or for worse. We're yet to really find out. We're going to open up a character you really like. You like Diesel? Yeah. The Diesel? Yeah. Diesel 261. I sort of know this one as Andy Diesel. It was the how character. Did that do? How you know yeah. that Diesel 261? 261? Yeah. Well, it's actually written on the side, I think. I hope I got his numbers right. Yeah. I think this was another character which had a fair bit of attitude. He was, you know, very much on the on the Diesel side. The steamies were, I think, the enemies. Oh, yeah. And there's a model I'll go and get for my collection, and we'll do a hard-up comparison. What do you think of that one? Is he's, you like that one? Yeah, but he look hot. He look hot? Yeah, feel him. He is hot. Well, well, he's hot as in, well, I started saying hot as in physically hot, not as hot as in hey, hey, hey. But he um, looks interesting, I think. This is a character that um, I think it's the first time he's been in take and play mode. Crikey, I hope I'm right there. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah. See? Yeah, how is his wheels? He's... Are they, they move or are they... They don't oh, that's move. weird. Oh, come on. Only diesel tens. Oh, come on. I thought it would have had little uh, bogies there which move. Let me just go and get another model and just check this against another diesel I've got of the same style. Yeah, and only diesel ten moves. Yeah, no, I've got a. Diesel look, let's let me go and look at another one. Okay. Well, here's diesel 199. And look at the wheels on this one. Okay, I think it's about the same size as Diesel, the one we just opened. What do you think of that one? It's got moving wheels, hasn't it? Yeah, like Diesel. Yeah, so which one do you prefer? What would you prefer to have? Would you like to have those solid wheels or, or this one here? This one. There you go. You heard it straight from the boy. I hope the people who are making these toys hear that. I'm actually very, very disappointed to see that myself. Let, let me see it looks like Diesel. Yeah. But you know, quite long. The only little long. Hmm. I yeah, this, this one's so long. Yeah, it's um. Mm. I'm just trying to bite my tongue here at the moment, actually, after seeing that. Um, well, my boy's going to be happy with it, but you can see that he would prefer to have wheel sets which actually move like that. Hello, what's going on here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, Daddy's getting angry, isn't he? <laughs> uh, we've got this sort of locked up wheel heck? sets on this one. <sighs> well, you're having a good good look over Diesel, aren't you? I dare say in the end, he'll play with that toy and the disappointment of the wheels not being individual bogeys there will wear away. But um, it's interesting you put that hard up against that one there. I mean, this is, I don't know what to say actually. Are they the same length there? It's a little bit shorter. It's been shortened up just a fraction compared to Diesel uh, 199. Let me put it up next to Diesel 10 here. Yeah, it's just a little bit shorter than Diesel 10 as well. Maybe this is the way they're going to be designed now. Let me go and get uh, the classic model of this one that I've got. And we'll do a bit of a really interesting hard-up comparison. 
you know, I was sort of thinking, I went down and looked at some more of the take and play models. I've got, I've got loads of them, or my, my boy has loads. Mighty Mac has got a straight through um, axle. There's no different bogies between those two. And I suppose it's the same sort of length as that diesel 261. But then, you know, you've got the rolling stock vehicles like this, and they've got the um, separate bogies, which I'm sure everyone out there would enjoy. Tell me what you prefer. Would you prefer to have locked up you know, wheels in a row, or would you prefer to have individual bogies? It's a bit longer. That's sort of the same length as you know, your, your diesel 10. That length seems to you know, imply that we're going to get bogies, but I suppose the other argument could swing the other way. For the toy companies, if you have you know, great big long tender engines like that, without you know, wheels that move, or the front wheel that moves independently, you can sort of make the wheels just be all in one line. But hey, let the audience have the say on this. What's your thoughts about the wheels being, in a sense, locked up and not individual bogies? Because I'm sure the audience are going to be far more diplomatic than I ever will be. And I'll get off my ranting hobby horse now and get another beautiful model to compare to that new diesel. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, back in the golden era of Thomas and Friends Toys, there was a brand called Erdl, and they made engines that look like this one here. Now, would you believe that is the same character? Almost hard to believe there, isn't it? There's no trick of photography here. One is, well, nearly half the length of the other one. Um, I dare say the audience will have something to say about that. Let me ask my boy, which one of these two do you prefer? Can you point out to me the one you like the most? This one, the long one. You like the long one? Mm -hmm. Now, tell me why you like the long one. Why do you like it? But it's very long like this. But I like it. It's very cool. Well, there you go. It's straight from... Uh, the person who is probably a far better toy expert than I am. I'm with my boy here. I mean, I'm a massive fan of the Ertl toys. They were just beautiful. They are just eye candy toy trains. Sure, they had a few little problems, but they were a beautiful toy. That is almost turning into a complete and utter joke. I'm sorry to say it like that, but that's the way I see it. Well, I dare say I've just blown my chance of Mattel ever sending me some of these beautiful Thomas and Friends toys. Because I do reviews, I don't do ads. Oh, who you got there? Mighty Mac. Do you like Mighty Mac? Yeah. I think you do because it looks fairly well played with. Now, I've gone out and done a bit of a comparison here between some models here. I've got Diesel 199 and Diesel 261 in the Ertl range over the same length of model here. Here's the taken plays. There's Diesel 199 and they've shortened up Diesel 261. Now the question is why? Why has this model become a little bit shorter? I think we know the reason why, but do you like your models to be shortened up? Is that Does that mean that if we have a reissue re of, let's say, Diesel 10, are we going to get like a shorter version of Diesel 10? And that's going to really make some people cranky, but we've got to see it happen before we really go off like a rocket. And I've stripped the track away, and basically those two Ertl models are the same scale. And if I go here and look at these two, it looks like the Diesel 261 as someone put it through the Honey I Shrunk the Train machine. It's like someone said, why don't we descale it down by about, ooh, 5%. No one's going to notice, are they? You know, I'll have to admit, the Take and Play trains and the play sets have been excellent. I've been exposed to a lot of them. My son has really enjoyed some of these play sets. But what was sort of interesting to me was, some of these play sets were played with far more than others. I sort of spoke about this in another video, although I may have edited it out because it was a video which might be a bit too long, but I'll go over it very quickly again. Little play sets like this, and they sort of either come in the Totally Tidmouth play set or they come as individual things and you get a special engine with them. They're actually not bad. There's two of them there. They do join together, as you can see there. They end up being played with a lot, um, which I was quite surprised about, and they sort of fold up. Let's do a quick fold here. And they, you know, they do take and play. They're genuine take and plays, although I folded the handle in there. That's what I call a genuine take and play. You can store your engine well, somewhere in there. Believe me, you can. More elaborate play sets like this, hmm, they don't come out and get played with as often. Although, to contradict myself here, the one over the back there in a little bit of darkness, that one there is a very expensive play set, but it actually got played with a lot. That Rock Quarry one run. Uh, this came with the Totally Timoth playset. It's, of course, you know, I suppose every railway needs the Timoth sheds. It gets played with a lot. Dieselworks got played with a lot, but make sure you glue your legs on. 
I'm not into the sets that have little bits and pieces that go missing. Just thinking back to the Goldmine set, notice that piece is gone. That's the problem with bits which aren't attached to the sets. Over the back there is the uh, pirate one. And the best thing on that was that skull. It's a playset which rarely ever got played with. This is a new one I haven't yet worked out, but I think this is a very good playset. The Soda Ironworks. It's got a lot of interesting playability on this one. This one came with Totally Tidmouth playset. You can buy it individually, but my advice is buy the big playsets. Don't buy these individually. They're quite expensive individual pieces. Cranky gets played with a lot. Soda Ship Shipping Company, as impressive as it is, it didn't get played with that much. Uh, the one here, the Blue Mountain Quarry, I think this playset, because it breaks up into a number of parts, and I wouldn't classify it as a real take and play playset, um, my son just can't put it together after it's been packed away. Uh, as for the aquarium one here, the Shark Exhibit 1, possibly one of the weakest playsets that I've had. And here's another one of those smaller ones that fold up. And there's an example here of where you can store your engine in here, like that. But um, it's one of those things, it can be a little bit hit and miss, no pun intended. Uh, but we've had a lot of fun with these toys, and they really do uh, present value because they're robust, and they look good, and they all basically key together to make one giant terrain set. It's interesting, my son's gone over the back there to rock quarry run that's the one he really likes it was a good buy that one uh, but what is also a bit curious is that some of these play sets are reappearing and rebranded that one there is rebranded and i've seen it in the shops sort of newish and the other one i've seen rebranded is the diesel works which is that one over there and I, I can't remember the names at the moment someone will leave the comments that's been rebranded as well it's funny in, when i first saw this play set here i thought it was a fairly weak play set but it proved to be quite a popular one the shark exhibit playset really looked nice in box, but it proved to be a complete nut of bomb. But that's the way my boy played with and interpreted these toys. There's some of his favourites here, there are some that he barely touched. Maybe there are other children out there who have totally reversed stories compared to what my son did with these playsets. You know, I just had a brainwave. Maybe this shorter engine will work better on Rock Crow Run because it was one of these playsets that you really preferred the shorter style engine. Let's give it a run. Let's give that diesel a run down Rock Quarry Run. Oh, there he goes. Can we make it all the way down the bottom? Oh yeah, nice work. Hey, maybe there's a method to the madness of shortening up those engines. And we're gonna give the other new one a run. Down Rock Quarry Run. Ready to go. There's some darkness here. Oh, we're sort of stuck in there. Oh, we make it through. Oh yeah. And another one scootles down. Oh, it's Diesel again. Go for another runner. Oh, let's not forget little blue hero. We've got to give him a run. Or else people will say, no, he didn't give Thomas a run. He's made it through. And we're going down the other way now. That's the funny thing. Now he started playing. He's not going to stop. And I had these out here to do a video. <laughs> he put all the places brought back inside again. I mean, it's interesting. I'm at the back of my big review table here. It's a lot of Thomas awesome stuff when you look across the table there. But uh, I can't keep my eyes off this one here. Certainly proved to be one of the all-time great play sets. Well, I'm sort of glad I looked over those two new Taken plays there. It was sort of interesting to see the changes and what's going on there in the Thomas and Friends world. And it's sadly that time of the video where we're going to say thanks for watching and... Bye for now. And Dad, can yes. I bring this in, please? Oh, you want to take one of my precious Ertles into play with? Yep. You really like it, don't you? Yeah, I really, really like it. Okay, you can take it in, but you've got to take special, special care of it. Can you do that, do that for me? Yeah. Yeah, I can't say this one well. Uh, maybe just one. You're pushing your luck asking for two. Okay, you can take them both in. So Dad, when, when I do that, my eyes get fuzzy, look. Really? What causes crazy eyes? See? Told ya. I think too much Thomas stuff causes crazy eyes. Yeah. Well, there isn't a fail reel in this video. Somehow I made this video without having any fails, which is almost a first for me. 
but possibly the fail here is the class 40 diesel has not got individual buggy wheels but we will let the audience have the final say tell me what you think about that quite remarkable change <laughs>